Okay. Let's try this again. Go live with. Alana, you have to be a viewer in order for me to go live with you. Ha! Ah. Ah, I think I got it. I think I got it. Oh. Yay! Hi. We did it! Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hi, G. Hi. Hi. Oh my god, Ben. We Hi, love honey. you so much. I love Anytime you too. Anytime technology is involved, it's a disaster. <laughs> I'm sorry for all your beautiful watchers and followers that they um they had to miss a minute with you while you tried to get me here. But it's, hi, it only took us five minutes. Hi, how's your That's quarantine? It. Um, I have to say, and this has nothing to do with the realities going on outside of my house, which are devastating and so real. But mm. in my house, um, we go to TikTok school. Really? <laughs> like that, that's my homeschooling. Does that mean you're, they're teaching you about TikTok or you're making TikTok? They're teaching me about TikTok. Really, everything you need to know about life is on TikTok. Recipes. Fabulous. Gorgeous. Cardio. Mm-hmm. Bonding. Lots of musical theater. Lots of musical theater. Um, like geography, because people are doing them all over the world. Yes. Fashion. Tons of fashion. Tons of fashion. Anyway, so I feel like there are a lot of things that are so serious and devastating and real. But when I look back on this time and I think about the gratitude I will feel for this family time, mm -hmm. and if we can hold on to some like small amount of um, internal community in my household, it will feel like a win. So. Yeah. Definitely that. Where are you? I see beautiful flowers. I'm in LA in my house that I grew up in um, with my parents and my, oh my God. you know, Julie with the whole fam. There? They are and they're somewhere doing something. Who knows? Okay. Um, but yeah, everyone's here. My, we like kind of the loop of isolation is our house and my uh, sister and her, all of her son's house. Okay. So we can, everybody's feeling well. Everyone's well. Yes. I was sick for a little while and it, I think it probably was COVID, but I didn't get a test because it was very difficult to get a test in the beginning. And I, so I right. just, so I've just taken an antibody test finally. And in a few days, I should know the answer as to whether what? it was or not. Okay. So tell me about the antibody test. Cause that's what everyone is waiting for. That's the next stage of any possibility of reentering life in some right. way. So is that like you spit into a cup? Is that a swab? What is it? So it was, I, it took me a long time to figure out how to do it or where to yes. do it. I, fig, I found this random clinic in West Hollywood that uh, is doing it by appointment. So I did it with them. I believe they're called Next Health. They were okay. really great. It was really easy. It was very sanitary, masks and gloves and everything. All it was was a, a, a blood take, one, one vial of blood. And then that's it. And so then they're going to test the blood. And then so it's blood. supposedly they'll tell me in four or five days, how much antibodies, if there are any antibodies, like well, how strong they are. But for all I know, I just had a, a random virus, but I feel like it would be so strange because I like lost my taste and I lost my smell right. and I had the cough and I had the fever. And so I did the two weeks alone of isolation. And so I, I hope that was not for not nothing. Yeah. Well, I bet. So, so talk about like, first of all, hi. Hi. I love you. I love you too. And I just want to, before I get so wrapped up in wanting to know everything you've done since I last saw you, yes. part of why we're doing this today is yes. Each Network, this amazing platform that is all things Broadway and art, yes. gave me this incredible opportunity to do a film series, taking my podcast, Little Known Facts, making it into a film series. And the very first star of that series is one and the only Ben Platt. And other people that I was able to interview are George Salazar and Zachary Quinto and Celia Keenan-Bolger and John Slattery and Nikki M. James. So any kind of like actor and genre of acting that you like, I've got those There's people. an interview. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, we talked about how we can sort of give people a little present. And I thought, can we start by giving them some free Ben Platts? So all weekend from right now till midnight, all of the episodes are streaming for free on the Stage Network's Facebook or YouTube channel. 
Yes, they, they, you can watch them as individual YouTube interviews. I just, I just saw for free, yes. so, and it's all the way through Sunday, right? Yeah, till midnight, which is amazing. Kind of Monday and Sunday at the same time for just one minute. Amazing. Um, and maybe maybe they'll let us have it even longer. We'll see. But we're starting with that, and hopefully everyone you know will enjoy that over the weekend. Um, I just want to talk about your thinking you had COVID for a second. Sure. Um, did you have a high fever or a little bit of fever? I had, if if this turns out to have yes. been COVID, it was certainly overall, I've had a, a, a lot, way fortunate time than a lot of people. I It was like 100, 203 for like three or three or four days, uh, kind of kind of up and down. Yes. Um, and then just like congestion and, cough, and dry cough. Um, and then after those first four days, it was really just like congestion. And then I lost the taste and smell for another four, four or five days. And that was really it. So if it does turn out to be it, I will consider myself very, very lucky. But that's all I got. Um, so speaking of taste. Yes. First of all, thank God. Baruch Hashem. But you are on the other side of this. Yes. That's well. all I have to say. Um, when you were doing Dear Evan Hansen, it was mm -hmm. no secret that your dietary restrictions were intense. Mm -hmm. in terms of being able to have the, the the voice and the stamina and to feel your very best to do Evan eight shows a week. Totally. I don't think you were eating in the ways that you were before you started that show right. in your life. It was very much connected to that show, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, I know that maybe after the show finished, there was like a lot of indulgence in delicious like road trip food. Oh, yes. Panda Express, Domino's. Yes, McDonald's. maybe even a McDonald's burger, maybe. McFlurry, of course. McFlurry, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, thinking about like no taste and a McFlurry, like what a waste. So I know. how are you, like now that you've leveled off and you're back in the world and working and singing and all those things pre-COVID and you'll be back to them post-COVID, are you still living like a gluten-free life? Not really, I mean, before, I was doing The Politician the second season before this all happened, which yes. thank, thank, uh, thank goodness we finished. So it'll be out in the summer. Okay. Um, just in Amazing. time. Um, but I, so I was on sort of like a modified one just to stay, you know, Pretty on camera. Yeah, pretty on camera, exactly. Yes. Not, not like a, not a, uh, wait, here's Riley. Hi, Riley. Oh. <laughs> she gets all the physical affection because we can't touch each other. Uh, isn't, um, I, my dog is like, get off of me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I wasn't on as, as strict of a one as I needed for like the physical Evan Hansen, but I was just trying to eat well generally. Yeah. Now, like many of us, it's just caution to the wind. I am eating just coffee cake every day. Mm. Um, I'm eating a lot of uh, oat milk and Cheerios in the morning, which oh. I'm really loving. Um, lots of cheese, lots of chocolate, lots of Delish. ice cream, lots of pizza. Yes. I think it's a treat yourself kind of time. Yes. And and are you cooking? Are your parents cooking? Like, are people cooking together? Where is food as like communal My, activity? So we're trying to support as many like takeout like restaurants as we can to keep them open. And we do yeah. we have a good system where we unload it all with gloves and we we change it onto normal plates and then we wash our hands and then we eat it. Right. Um, but my mom cooks plenty. Um, and uh, I've been trying to learn a little bit to cook. I wanted to maybe use this opportunity to learn a little bit so far i've just made sweet potatoes and an omelet and that's it but in a microwave? <laughs> no in an actual pan um so i I'm am gonna... so proud of you baby steps baby steps my um i'll share with you like trying to learn something new um no one can judge this is a time of like good for you but mm -hmm. i am starting to knit and, and it looks look. great <laughs> <laughs> it's very Gryffindor. It can, yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, it might end up being a sculpture, a scarf, a bookmark. It could be so many things. But it's really, I've been really looking toward meditation. And we still can walk around Brooklyn as long as we're, you know, by ourselves or yes. with our family. Mm -hmm. Trying to find whatever nature I can to sort of calm myself. Meditation has been amazing. And then I thought, let me learn something new. Yeah. I learned two things. How to join an Instagram Live. That happened today. Boom. Thank I you. learned it too, because I did not yeah. know. Well, I'm so proud of us. Um, do you get to see Beanie? Like, can you drive in a car and drive? Like, tell me how you guys are handling that. 
So we, we've been doing um, weekly, with our whole group of friends, we've been doing like a weekly Zoom trivia. So every week is a different theme. We've done a Broadway one, obviously, that me, me and Noah Galvin curated together. And then um, Beanie just did a um, Harry Potter one for all of us. Um, so we see, it, gets, it feels like a hang, which is nice because we're yeah. all together. Um, but I have gone outside, just recently for the first time, I went outside and did a driveway wave with Beanie outside her house. So I got to oh see that she's okay. Um, it's just nice crazy? to know that she's here and it's it's, it's all so crazy crazy i don't i don't even know you know i keep harkening back to this idea that like for today my family my immediate family um feel normal and mm -hmm. and i know that that could change at any moment so it's the strangest thing like in some ways it just feels I don't know, like small, keeping it very small and cozy and just trying to keep my kids sane while, yeah. you know, they, you know, when they found out they wouldn't be going back to school this year, the social sadness around that, the logistical, like, but wait, I left all this stuff in my locker, like all the, the real and, um, the big and the small mm -hmm. angst that comes with it. Um, Caleb was finishing middle school, so like no graduation and he'll just be moving on to the next. And, and Georgia was in the middle of studying for SATs and now all of that's canceled. So what will that mean for college admissions and all that stuff? But it's just a very surreal thing thinking about, like you and I are physically, are people who are very comfortable physically, you know, hugging each other and hugging our friends. We, we, we love it. It's our love language. It's the Italian in us. <laughs> um, and so I'm so curious when things, you know, when your antibody test comes back and when people's antibody tests start coming back and we get through the worst of this catastrophic moment, mm -hmm. um, what our like social dynamics are going to be. It's just very... Bizarre. It is. It's going to be a, a long time to adapt, I think. And I think like sort of germophobia and cleanliness in general is going to be way more the norm. Like, I think seeing people wipe down their seat on a plane or on a bus or at a restaurant or which used to be sort of something you kind of roll your eyes at is going to yeah. be like, oh, of course. Not feel yeah. like overkill. Yeah, exactly. Also, I just noticed that our, our audience has grown a lot since we started. So I want you to say one more time what the what the reason for our chat is. Yeah, well, because I love you. Um, a, that way, not to. Duh. Um, B, so the Stage Network is this wonderful streaming platform that supports uh, all things Broadway. And they very generously um, are streaming for free from right now until midnight on Sunday this weekend, my series that's called Little Known Facts. And it's uh, a series of interviews with my most famorous, famorous, famous, <laughs> and favorite. A good artist, word, famorous. <laughs> Famer artist. Um, <laughs> My interviews are with Ben Platt. You might, you guys might know him. Um, George Salazar, Zachary Quinto, Celia Keenan Bolger, Nikki M. James, and uh, Madman's beloved John Slattery. Crazy. Um, and so there are these six uh, talk show style interviews with these incredible people, and you can watch them for free all weekend on the Stage Network's Facebook platform and their YouTube platform. Correct. Fantastic. Or you can just watch Ben's all weekend on a loop. I but they're all so good. That. You got to watch Celia's too. It's so fantastic. Mm. And Nikki, like, like Nikki M. James tells this story of she'd finished Book of Mormon. And you know that dream you have, like what it, like that thing of, you know, you're supposed to know the lines and your entrances, but you don't even know what show you're in. Yes. And you um, get out there and you like have no idea what to say. And no sometimes idea. you're Actually, naked. It's called and... a nightmare. I call yes. it a dream. That's <laughs> a nightmare. Um, she told me this story uh, that she was in London with her boyfriend and she got this random call that the um, the woman playing her role in the West End production got really sick and they wondered if she thought, it had been like two years since she had done the show and they were like, <laughs> do you think you could come do it? And they're like, we're not sure because maybe her understudy is ready. And she just had this crazy moment of like, could I? And what a way to like make my West End debut. debut. <laughs> and she was sort of convincing herself like, so it'll be a little clunky, like the audience will be highly aware. And she went from like, absolutely not to like, maybe. And then they were like, we're good. So 
I had a I had a bizarre dream the other night that um, all my dreams have been weird during this time. Yeah. Um, that uh, did you watch Unorthodox yet? In one day. Absolutely, absolutely stunning and devastating. Yes, and now um, I watch her on Instagram. Shira. Because I'm obsessed with Shira Haas, and it's yeah. like, it's. A, I want you to tell your dream, but it's such an important lesson in like, how much do you really want to know about a person's real life? before you watch them in this in this role like like right. because i knew no, like she's a huge star by the way she's just new to me she's huge star new globally to people who ever she was new so, to me too except for i, I watched her on steve soul as well which she was also on which is fantastic another amazing show but the and, dream was that uh, yes. she had been kidnapped and i was like the, I, yes and i was like i think it's because i love her performance so much that i feel like protective of her now yeah and so it, i was like the agent that was in charge of like saving her and so I, it was like a lot of like uh, deciphering codes and like messages with like magazine cutout letters and like clues and and i did i did re, uh, save her i did find her you saved shira Hutz. i did so were you like a Mossad agent or a talent agent <laughs> both honestly both um we all are. We all, but we all have a little of both. I also just want to say to all the people that are saying in the comments, I see you. Hello. Thank you all for watching. We love you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Politicians coming. Season two has been asked a lot. It's coming this summer, as I said a little earlier. Yeah. Can't, I can't tell you the date yet, but, but really soon. So it's coming. And it's done. And it's awesome. I've seen it. Um, and I do have a new... It? Will you be I, singing in season two? I cannot s disclose. Um, I would say definitely just at least watch to the end. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Um, and I also have a song that I wrote that's going to come out uh, soon. We're still working on the production and everything of it, but I'm really excited about it. And I wrote it sort of inspired by this whole moment with my uh, wonderful collaborator, Michael Pollock, who I wrote a lot of the first album with. Yes. Um, and it's going to be really exciting. As soon as it's done, you'll be the first to know. Well, that was definitely something I wanted to ask sort of artistically, where are you finding yourself in terms of being able to create new music at the moment and are you also like I just talked to Kristen Chenoweth she's literally they sent her all the equipment to do her role in an animated film just in her closet so there that's are ways amazing that certain productions especially in the world of voiceover are are moving forward have you been doing any secret projects like that in your closet so I I, I wrote that song over zoom and then I went and recorded it in like a in like a little private little studio where I was the only person in the building and okay. so I wore gloves and a mask and then I went in and then remotely via like zoom somebody engineered me from a different location oh it was my crazy God. is there a name of the song um I can't tell you yet. okay it's called I can't tell you right now it's called Go I on. can't tell you right now um but it'll be you'll, you'll know very soon uh, in okay. the next in the next couple of weeks um okay. also I'll get to share about the Netflix special very soon too that'll be out before you know it okay um very soon Okay. Um, so lots of good things coming. So yeah, I did that. I recorded uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow in my living room that was on the Saturday Night Seder, which if anyone hasn't watched it, definitely go watch the Saturday Night Seder. It's fantastic. Can you explain the behind the scenes of that? Because that entire thing felt so unbelievably well produced and beautiful and connect like one connective whole piece with all totally. of the artists. So how did you do that? Well, I had such a small, I just had to, they just told me like record yourself doing Over the Rainbow, send it okay. in and we will edit it. So basically everybody, all these wonderful stars and whatever, singers and everybody sent in their organized bits, uh, either via Zoom and recorded on Zoom or via just their own selfie videos. Okay. And then there was an amazing team led by Ben Pasek, who I think sort of conceived the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ben Wexler did amazing work on it and all these really talented people and musical directors. And they edited it and mixed it and just put it all together and made it feel really kind of seamless. And it was just so really- So the way your thing went from black and white to color and sort of all the- They did all of that. They did all the post on I that. asked. I sent them a raw six minute video of me singing into camera and they, they edited it with Judith speaking and they edited it with the photos right. of the immigrants and with the change of color and like, like uh, Shoshana and, and Cynthia, and, like for right. example, like- like they got the piano from Steven and then Cynthia sang with the piano within her ear and then Shoshana sang with the piano and Cynthia in her ear. So it's just, it was so I was impressive. I with Shoshana, I was like, how did you do that? And she was like, it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> they like, sounded so like, amazing. I was like, do you push send request to the live? Like everything to me is so magical. She's like, the, the hard part was not 
that Cynthia and I are singing at the same time. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> anyway, but I was just watching it going like, this is really. It was beautifully little, put together. Yeah, and like a window into how work can continue to happen right now. Yes. Because it felt like Cynthia and Trishan were singing together. It did. And with Stephen Schwartz. And, and it just all felt so immediate and beautiful. And that Seder in particular, I think I might have told you this in text or I've been thinking like for me growing up, there were so few things celebrating in a in a in such a global way a Jewish holiday. It always mm -hmm. felt like this one off or super unique or this much a part of a much larger thing. Yeah. And so to see this event filled with Jewish and non Jewish gorgeous artists who participated, um, as if it could have been a Christmas special, like with yeah. the same normalcy. It's true. Um, and beauty and passion and of course raising money is always like the key to some uh, amazing charity. Oh, that, over like, $2 million for the CDC from the Seder, amazing. It's like, anyway, all of it, the heart and the story, and just that also as a Jewish person, seeing something celebrated in that way in real time was just extraordinary, so. I agree. I also have to tell you that I go on runs uh, in the little park um, next to my house with, with a mask just to get outside. Yeah. And I listen, I like to listen to a different cast album each time because getting through the show helps me run for a longer time. Um, and I've been listening to Charlie Brown pretty much every other day because it's just, I, like I chose it as one of the sort of random ones when I was first going through all of my albums. Mm. And then I realized of all the shows right now, it's like the most, I don't know, it meets the moment in such a nice way. Yeah. It, like It's exactly the kind of tone that you want uh, right now, which is like funny and ridiculous, but so sweet and so much pathos. And it's, I highly recommend a walk or a run or a relax to the, to the soundtrack of Jürgen and Charlie Brown. Well, it's so crazy because Kristen Chenoweth and I did an event for the Actors Fund the other night. And part of the thing, like a, a live thing, but it was on YouTube. And, and one of the things I found was this original <gasps> signed Jürgen Man Charlie Brown playbill. That is Took my breath away. Right now. But the funniest, most hilarious part of all is that Kristen wrote Sally. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, imagine anyone on the planet like who's Kristen Chenoweth who is she oh she played Sally the one who's not Lucy anyway I thought that was like the most brilliant hilarious thing that There's I've people, forgotten about people are quoting um you heard about Charlie Brown in the in the comments lines from happiness and things like that's making me happy oh. someone said happiness is where did it go happiness is being alone every now and then and happiness is coming home again it's true it's so true Someone Very else true. just wished your dad happy birthday. Oh, I'll tell him you said so. so. It was this week. Um, speaking of happy birthday, can you wish Emma Adelson happy birthday? Emma Adelson, happy, happy birthday. It's Have an birthday. amazing birthday. Happy birthday. I love the way people are doing parades oh, for I their know. birthdays right now. Yeah, my nephew did that for his. his, his he put all, all of his art that he's made out in like a little art show, and his friends came and drove by and looked at it and waved. Oh, my God. I know. It's I really sweet. I, Kelly O'Hara's friends did that for her, like drove to Connecticut and sort of like freaked her out and surprised her. And it's the sweetest thing. Um, I know my love, love, love that you have so much going on. Um, Tell us one more time the most important bit of information. That I love you. Well, okay. And the second most important. Second most important. Happy birthday, Mark Platt. <laughs> um, okay, third. <laughs> Stage Network, this incredible streaming platform devoted to all things Broadway, um, is streaming all weekend my series, my um, talk show with some of the most glorious artists on the planet. So if you go to the Stage Network's Facebook page or their YouTube channel, there are episodes with Ben Platt, Zachary Quinto, Celia Keenan Bolger, Nikki M. James, George Salazar, and John Slattery, each one a little unique little Easter egg for each of you to find where they reveal and share the most incredible stories. And I think right now, A, thank you to Stage Network for making it all free all weekend till midnight. Right now, we're all trying to just find ways to, um, to just share anything that will give us a moment's peace. And starting with Ben Platt's incredible episode. Um, I also want to say quickly that if you want to have a chance to win this uh, autograph by Sally. I was going to ask. And Roger Bart's personal paw print right there. Um, if you make a donation to the Actors Fund, 
and just take a screenshot of that donation. It could be one penny, it can be $1 million. You are entered to win. There's no amount too big or too small. Just send a screenshot to feedback at bpn.fm. Feedback at bpn.fm and you're entered to win. And someone will, maybe Ben will win it. You might get to win the Playbill. I have my playbill from when I saw the show as a little boy. Oh, my God. Um, didn't you do uh, Music Man with Kristen? I did. That was, yes, that was my first job I ever had professionally. I was Winthrop, and she was my sister, Marion Library. Oh, my God. Do you remember, like, how did you make Winthrop sound? Did you do something special with your tongue? Just a lift. Sister, sister, isn't this the most That's... scrumptious, all the gold thing you ever saw? Oh, sister. Oh, my that's, God. That was my first happiness, line for my first audition. Happiness is... Have ben Lisping. Ben <laughs> Shabbat shalom. To Shabbat shalom. Who participates. I love you. We're going to save this love somehow. You too. Yes, it'll give me the option to keep it up on my story. I will. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share it with others. Thank Good. you. And I cannot tell you how much I want to just hug you. And maybe that's the first thing I'll get to do when this is Sending done. Sending you a virtual hug across the country. And like a little elbow bump. Mm -hmm. All right. I love you, honey. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. Mwah.